This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers across the country and around the world. The New York Times is reporting New York Attorney General Letitia James issued subpoenas late Monday to Deutsche Bank and Investors Bank for records related to the Trump Organization. This comes just weeks after President Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, testified before Congress that Trump had inflated his assets in financial statements. The Times reports the New York probe focuses on how the Trump Organization financed several large projects, including Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C., the Trump National Doral outside Miami, and the Trump International Hotel and Tower in Chicago. In addition, the New York Attorney General's office is investigating Trump's unsuccessful attempt to buy the Buffalo Bills football team five years ago. This comes a week after the New York state regulators subpoenaed the Trump Organization's insurance broker, Aon, after Cohen's testimony. The House Judiciary Committee also recently requested documents from 81 people and groups in Trump's inner circle. Meanwhile, Trump's former campaign manager, Paul Manafort, will be back in court Wednesday. Last week, he was sentenced to 47 months, less than four years in prison, for eight counts of bank fraud and tax evasion. This week's sentencing stems from his guilty plea on two conspiracy charges. He could face an additional 10 years in prison. We're joined now by a journalist who's been closely reporting on Donald Trump's financial dealings since the 1980s. David K. Johnston is a Pulitzer Prize-winning investigative reporter, previously worked at The New York Times, founder and editor of DCReport.org. His most recent book is titled, It's Even Worse Than You Think, What the Trump Administration is Doing to America. David K. Johnston, welcome back to Democracy Now! In a moment, we're going to talk to you about Trump's new budget. Uh, but right now, this latest news of further investigations into President Trump. Well, Donald Trump has always been able to stop investigations into his background. He beat four federal grand juries as a young man, for example, and New Jersey casino regulators never did their job digging into him. Now he's got a New York State Attorney General, Letitia James, who ran for office saying, I'm going to dig into Donald Trump, and she has the legal tools to do so. Uh, we've got the Southern District of New York, which is very experienced in these, and we've got a host of committees in the House. We're going to see Donald Trump's tax returns. We're going to see how much money he got from Russian oligarchs. And the Deutsche Bank matter is particularly important, because Deutsche Bank, which has been fined altogether over $22 billion for misconduct, is the second leading bank in the world for laundering Russian money. Uh, arguably, it is not a bank. It is a criminal enterprise. And, in fact, the German government is trying to figure out how to get rid of Deutsche Bank by folding it into another big bank called Commerce Bank. And, in, and you, you, you mentioned uh, Trump's taxes and the efforts by the, uh, the House to get at them. Can the, will we ever see uh, Trump's taxes? And, and you mentioned that there's this whole issue of how he once got a star tax credit. Can you explain what that is well, for, uh, for all, our viewers since, and listeners? First of all, since 1924, we have had a law that says Congress can look at anyone's tax returns, and they do it all the time. If you get a refund of more than $2 million, it's automatically sent to Congress for review by staff experts who work on the tax committees. Uh, so we will see his returns. And if the administration tries not to turn them over, they might win at the first court, but they will lose that fight. Uh, now, the star tax credit is something that if you're a homeowner in New York State, as I am, uh, if you make less than $500,000, you get a credit on your property tax bill, or at one point you got a check in the mail. Donald collected this for, I think, four years. It's public record who gets it. You only get it if your income on your tax return shows less than $500,000. Donald came up with this. So that indicates that for four years, his official tax returns were saying that he made less than $500,000 right. a year. Now, his, his cockamamie story is, oh, there was a mistake about the address. It doesn't work that way. It's what lo box has this number, and then it's automatic. Um, in some ways, it's not unusual for him to report such small income because Congress has special rules for the real estate business that Donald lobbied for that allows real estate people to live tax-free. But there's plenty of other evidence. Donald was tried two times for income tax fraud. And he lost both cases. They were civil cases, but you will have seen no mention of the mainstream media, even though they're in my biography, The Making of Donald Trump, with the court citations. And the judges in those cases were very harsh on him. 
What do you want to see most come out of these investigations, where something like 81 people connected to Trump or an entities connected to Trump um, are being requested documents of? What well, do you think I, is most explosive? I, I think the single most important thing is how much money he got from the Kremlin. The Russian oligarchs are essentially a criminal gang led by Vladimir Putin, and we know they have been putting money in his pocket, as have many other. Remember, the collapse of the Soviet Union led to the theft of the property of the people of the old Soviet Union. And Donald has been a person who's laundered money for these people, held money for these people, done deals that make no sense for these people and with them. And we need to understand that Donald Trump is not a loyal American. The kindest thing, Amy, I could say about Donald is he has divided loyalties. His own actions have indisputably shown that. I think he is a Kremlin agent, unwittingly perhaps, because Donald's not very witting, but but he is absolutely, in my view, a Kremlin agent. Well, I mean, uh, we have not seen the Mueller investigation yet. No, but we when you look at the number of people who've been charged and the number of people um, and the people who are now being sentenced, they're not being gotten on collusion charges. You don't have to get President Trump on collusion charges for there to be serious questions raised about him. That's right. You don't have to show a conspiracy. That would be the criminal charge on this issue. Uh, the oath of office is to faithfully execute what Congress tells you to do. So here we have a man who rejects the advice of our intelligence services and military. And we can sit here and criticize them all day long, because we live in a free society and we should. But he rejects them and says, I believe President Xi. I believe Vladimir Putin. I believe uh, dictator Kim. So, really? Uh, and so he, he is a clear and present danger to us. But I think they, the Mueller report or other investigations are going to show absolutely improper relationships before he took office with the Russians. And remember that uh, Donald Jr. said in response to an email saying the Russian government wants to help you win the presidency, love it. I'm sorry, the only proper response to an intervention by a foreign government, particularly a hostile foreign government, is to call the FBI and say, I need someone in counterintelligence. They didn't do that. They tried to lie about it. They tried to set up a secret communications link using the Soviet embassy's cable system. Imagine if somebody in Obama's administration or George W. Bush's had tried to do that. You know, they would have been impeached by now just over that. Well, uh, I wanted to ask you about the, the budget, uh, the, the, pre uh, the president's budget. Uh, Increases for the military, uh, about 5 percent increase for the military, at the same time, uh, dramatic uh, decreases for right. social programs. Your, your sense that you've been going through it. Juan, this budget is a budget lessons I learned, as Don Donald Trump learned, from dictator Kim. So the first thing you do is you take care of your military. You pour every dollar you can into a military that is bigger than you need, and that's your number one goal, to make sure that you have loyalty and stay in power. Then what you do is you take the disabled and the poor on Medicare, and you cut close to a trillion dollars over the next 10 years out of care for them. You take SNAP, which provides uh, nutrition to pregnant women, uh, children, and elderly people and the disabled. Hey, let's slash that. Education. There were all these students who were ripped off by for-profit colleges that cost four or five times what a community college did and gave you a lousy education, and some of them went broke. Make them pay every penny. They, in fact, say it isn't fair unless these students pay it back. So they're taking the side of the bankers against the students. Housing. Let's cut money for housing. People who are disabled, people who are on AIDS, people who are poor. We're going to cut that. And to New York and New Jersey by saying we are not going to fund the replacement of the 110-year-old tunnel through which thousands of commuters and people traveling up and down the East Coast travel every day. Tunnels owned by the federal government's Amtrak. Tunnels across the Hudson River. Cr under, the, under the Hudson um, River? Yeah. The, Donald Trump's message to New York and New Jersey, drop dead. Now, you mentioned uh, education. It's not only the, those who are delinquent in their loans, but also uh, he proposes to eliminate federal subsidies for uh, student loan interest and also um, to eliminate the uh, debt forgiveness for those students who uh, either work for the government for 10 years or work for a nonprofit, that they would be, uh, they would be forgiven their loans. He wants to get rid of that as well. But why would you want people to do any kind of service for the government except join the military?
I mean, that's the message Donald Trump is sending us. He is not investing in the future. And one of the things I haven't heard anybody talk about is he's continuing to go after basic science. More than half the economic growth in America since World War II is because of investments that we made in basic science. Only governments fund basic science, and in, in a large degree, for many decades, it was my, the U.S. that did so. And if you don't fund basic science, you know, you don't end up with a, a, this instrument. Companies built it, but they use the basic science research taxpayers paid for. And you're talking about like the iPhone, uh, the iPhone or any, cell any phone. or cell phone, GPS, all sorts of things, computers, streaming movies, all grow out of research funded by the federal government. Uh, some of it before World War II. And th this budget is basically an attack on middle class people and poor people, and it is designed to help the people like Donald Trump, people who have a lot of income do live a much better life. And by a lot of income, I don't mean the bottom of the 1%. That's two-income career couples who have professional jobs and are mostly in their 50s and 60s. I mean people who clip coupons and collect dividends uh, and own very large businesses. In his new budget, President Trump's calling for drastic cuts to domestic spending, including cutting $845 billion from Medicare spending over the next decade. On Monday, Congress member Ilhan Omar retweeted a short video of Trump's campaign promises on Medicare and Social Security. I'll save Social Security. I'll save Medicare. Ben Carson wants to get rid of Medicare. You can't get rid of Medicare. You know, Medicare is a program that works. Every Republican wants to do a big number on Social Security. They want to do it on Medicare. They want to do it on Medicaid. And we can't do that. And it's not fair to the people that have been paying in for years, and now all of a sudden they want to be cut. Don't get rid of Medicare. You can't do that. People love Medicare, and it's unfair to them. I'm going to fix it, make it better, but I'm not going to cut it. So. Trump has proposed cutting $845 billion from Medicare spending over the next decade. That was his campaign ad. You know, Donald once told me uh, health care should be like the roads. When you need it, you just use it. Uh, now he's gone to the Republican position of if you're not well to do, then you don't deserve health care. And remember, Congressman Grayson was mocked and, and I think maybe censured by the Republicans in the House when he said the Republican tax plan is if you get sick, die quickly. Well, now you're seeing that Donald Trump is not interested in what he said. He goes back and everything he said. Where is his infrastructure bill he promised out of the box? Where is that 10 percent tax cut for the middle class he promised last October? Everything he says is just transactional. If it gets him a vote today, that's fine. And tomorrow he'll turn around and stab you in the back. But now this budget has very little chance of, of, of uh, or I would say zero chance, zero chance, zero chance of passing in the Congress. He couldn't get a cuts like this through a Republican-controlled uh, uh, Congress. Now with the Democrats in control of the House, what do you expect to happen? But what, what's important here, Juan, is a budget is a statement of values, and Donald Trump has revealed his values. He has the values of a dictator. That's why I said budget lessons from dictator Kim, and all of his claims about. I love the cops, and then he took away their ability to take as a tax deduction, buying uniforms and guns and dry cleaning and paying union dues. Um, I, you know, love the students, and he wants to take away the subsidized loans and make people who got uh, for-profit college educations that failed, uh, colleges that failed, to make them pay. Uh, Donald Trump has no regard for anyone but himself. And so long as we treat him as if he's a serious person who has real policies, we're going to get nowhere. What we need to do is mock him and make fun of him. He's not very smart. He doesn't know what he's doing. Eight billion dollars and more, actually. It's considerably more than that for the wall that oh, he yes. originally asked uh, five, what, five uh, billion, five point six and billion not dollars Mexico for. Either. <laughs> Explain both the military budget and the wall, and then the massive cutbacks for um, social uh, programs throughout the well, United States. Well, essentially, what Trump's trying to do is cut social welfare programs everywhere he can to put more money into the broader national security budget, which is both the military and uh, the border border issues. He's never going to get his wall beyond the fact that you physically can't build it in some places. And it's a terrible symbol to America that completely undoes our position in the world uh, to pursue this. But, you know, as long as he listens to Fox News and to um, uh, Ann Coulter, 
then he's going to continue to do these things. He's not trying to expand his base. He's not trying to win over more people because he doesn't know how to do that. And I'm going to ask you about also the projections of his budget of a 3 percent growth for the yeah. next 10 years yeah. for, in the United States, as if there will never be, or, or at least for the next 10 years, we've already had 10 years of solid growth. He wants another 10 years with no recession. Well, the economy is already slowing down. And 10 years into this market, uh, which began under President Obama, you would expect it at this point to begin to slow down. So we only saw 20,000 jobs last month. You know, Trump goes around talking about, I have the biggest employment in American history. That's not the measure. Job growth is a good measure. Job growth has been about 20 percent lower under Trump than under Obama since the economy turned around. Uh, tax revenues in the last 90-day period were 2 percent lower which goes right to the heart of how this tax cut for the rich is not paying for itself. And, you know, a little known fact, Donald Trump's tax law gave eight-year loans at zero interest to all the multinational companies that had siphoned profits out of the country, and it also gave them a discount. So I've written about how Apple alone, just Apple, will turn a $120 billion profit off the Trump tax law, $120 billion. D.C. report, we've reported on that, and I've written about it for other publications. And finally, you've written about uh, Donald Trump in two books, uh, his biography and your more recent book. In 2000, he wrote the, in, um, the America We Deserve. He wrote, I'm a conservative on most issues, but a liberal on this one. We should not hear so many stories of families ruined by health care expenses. We must not allow citizens with medical problems to go untreated because of financial problems or red tape. The Canadian plan also hopes Canadians live longer and healthier than America. We need as a nation to reexamine the single-payer plan, as many individual states are doing, he said. Yeah, well, that made him look good back then. Today, he wants to look good with a different group of people. Donald has no principles except, I'm a winner. There is nothing else in his life, and we need to not treat him as if he's a serious policy person. He is not. He doesn't understand any of these things that are around, and he will flip on a dime from A to B, from black to white, Which from yes to no. Which means he could flip back. He could. If the climate were He could, and that. we should be very careful in watching him in the 2020 election, uh, where if he wins, we're in deep trouble as a country, and if he loses and there is no prosecution of him for the many crimes he's committed, he will go around the rest of his life fomenting violence against the United States and its people because he'll say, I was ripped off, I should stay in the White House. Your response to Nancy Pelosi saying impeachment off the table? Absolutely, because there's no votes to convict him. And why would you want to strengthen him by impeaching him and, and work up people who don't like that? Just use investigations to expose him, drip, 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 until the next election, and then you run against a weak candidate. Nancy's a general in strategy. Donald Trump isn't even a buck private. David K. Johnston, Pulitzer Prize winning investigative reporter, previously with The New York Times, now founder and editor of DCReport.org. He's been reporting on Donald Trump since the 1980s. His most recent book, It's Even Worse Than You Think, What the Trump Administration's Doing to America. This is Democracy Now! What's Happening to Hampshire College? We'll find out in a minute.